super fun stuff. Welcome to another super fun stuff print and paint video. In this episode, we try something new with making a miniature, a very interesting model to print. I'll get more into that in a second, but first let's talk about who I'm making. In the last video, I said this Marvel character was a mechanical monster who decimates his enemies. He was an awesome comic book character and a pretty good movie character. As a kid in the 90s, I got to read his solo first comic when it came out, and it featured the mutant named Cable. So who do you think it is? Well, some of you may have guessed it, it's War Machine. Kudos to Chia Pet 13 for guessing it correct in the comments from the last video. So War Machine is basically Iron Man with guns. James Rhodes, nicknamed Rhodey, was a marine pilot who was a skilled aviation engineer. Tony Stark hired Rhodey to be his personal pilot and eventually they became close friends. Early on, Tony Stark had alcohol problems and gave up the Iron Man suit. Tony decided to pass it to Rhodey and let him be the new Iron Man. Rhodey accepted and became a really good Iron Man for a while. Then Tony Stark died and Rhodey became the CEO of Stark Enterprises. This is where Stark Enterprises created the first War Machine armor. Well, lo and behold, Tony wasn't dead, Rhodey found out, Rhodey left Stark Enterprises, and their friendship was severed. Rhodey would take the War Machine armor and go solo for a while, with the occasional team up with Tony as Iron Man. War Machine's first comic came out in 1994, and it featured a cool black and shiny silver cover. It definitely shouts 90s. So what model did I pick for War Machine? Well here's one issue, there isn't a lot of them out there. There are a ton of Iron Man, which most of them have the same pose, but basically no printable models for War Machine. However, and here's what we're going to try out, there is an awesome ZBrush sculpt that artist Joe Grunfast created several years ago. This thing is amazing and it's super detailed. Check out his video and model, the link below. But the issue is that this is a ZBrush model. If you've ever played with ZBrush and a lot of other 3D modeling tools, many are not 3D printer friendly. They usually are hollow, have super thin walls, super small parts, and have issues scaling. This model in particular had all of those, plus being a super high res model. So after finagling a bit with ZBrush, reducing poly counts, merging subtools, dynameshing, and other nonsense, I got into a file that could be used in Mesh Mixer. FYI, I've never used ZBrush before, so I had a lot of research and learning to do. Anyways, I got into Mesh Mixer and figured I would clean it up a bit. I did an analysis tool on it and basically everything had errors. There was no way to really fix that unless I manually corrected it, which I didn't have time for that. However, I did manage to use the Make Solid tool and get it into an STL file. After doing all of this, I knew I had a model that had obvious errors, but I said what the hell, let's try and print it anyways. I'm sure there are folks out there that know what they're doing better than me, but I did my best in the amount of time I wanted to spend on it. So after printing it, surprisingly, it came out decent. Obviously there were some errors, but nothing I couldn't fix with a little side resin. So fixing some of the errors and adding a little more support to others, I'm looking at you knee pads, I go ahead and prime them. Oh, and I forgot to mention, I dropped him on the hardwood floor earlier. He shattered, so that was fun to fix. But after all said and done, I was happy with the model and to go forward with the project. Setbacks, yes, but this happens time to time. With this model, I also print out the rock he stands on. I printed it separately because I didn't know if the model was actually connected correctly to it or not. With this mini, he is a decent size, but he has very tiny feet. Tiny enough to make pinning difficult and painting hard. Remember painting Howard the Duck? So I decide that I'll base him first. So I create the base using cork again, surprise surprise, but I want to keep all my Marvel minis the same. I make a pretty cool base and now I want to pin him on it. Well, how? First I glued him on the base. One side is cork and the other side is resin. Obviously this won't hold for a long term solution. So I take some side resin that I bought online and add some with a toothpick under the foot that meets the resin rock. Using a UV flashlight, I harden the resin, making a strong bond between the mini and the base. This should give me adequate support for the mini. Now I primer and base coat the base, just using a paintbrush. And I'll go through and finish the base just like I did the last ones. Nothing too different or special. I take a little caution around the feet so that I don't get paint all over the mini. I also then apply a strong wash. So far so good. Now I start painting the mini. I decide to go with the silver first. You can really do either color first, but I like being able to see the model's details clearly. You could also paint this entire mini one color and then go back with the silver. But again, this can hide details and make it harder to see things. Because this guy is really detailed. I take my time and paint all the silver around him. I'm going with the classic color scheme, so I keep a reference photo of him up just in case. 
Silver is done. Now for the dark gray. I make a color that is nearly black, but not black. Reason is that I want to use a black wash to help accent some of the areas. Black wash on black paint doesn't really do anything. This way I get more color depth. I take my time to cover everything and not to overlap the silver too much. Sometimes you have to dab the brush in crevices to get the color in there. And now with that done, I paint his hand a light gray for now. I did all of this while my base was still drying. Maybe not ideal, but as long as you don't touch anything, you should be okay. I finish up the basing using a variety of dry brushing and a pigment. And he's looking good. We have a finished base and all the main colors. Now to the wash. This may be the easiest mod I've done when it comes to washes. I use a black wash on everything. Just slap it all over and wait for it to dry. Once dry, I take some additional black paint and darken some of the battle damaged spots. Sometimes the wash isn't enough. I also get a little streak details around these spots too to look like I exploded. So looking at him, I found him to be a tad boring. If you've seen well painted black colored minis online before, they all follow the same pattern with black and grays. It's all edge highlighting with mostly muted colors. This time I decided to try something new and a little different. I have a very light yellowish pigment and I decided to use that to give more color. A lot of people use these on tank treads or walking robot legs. So I do the same thing here, I add it to its lower legs, knee pads, arms, and other areas that protrude. On top, I add a dark red pigment to the battle damage areas to give even a little more color. Now is a long part of the process, highlighting. I take my time in a thin brush and highlight with a medium gray. I go around every edge, make scuffs, and try to accent the armor. After painting highlights for about an hour, why don't we do it again? Now I take a lighter gray and accent around the armor once more. This time I go a little bit lighter and try to hit only certain areas. Do you think we're done with the highlighting? Well, no. Now we go with a bright silver and accent all the silver areas, plus some of the darker armor areas around the battle damage spots. Again, I take my time and use a thin brush. At this stage, he's looking great. To finish him up, I do a little more accents. I add a little red for the missile launchers on his shoulder, and I do some white around the chest, orbs, and eyes. For this, all you need to do is add some thin whites and a little blue wash. It was really that simple. Then I go in and paint his revealed hand a little bit more. And voila, it's War Machine. However, he is a cool model, but he is still kind of boring. All that damage is cool, but I want to show that he's dishing it out as well. So I made some small little bullet casings for the base. To say the least, these things are tiny. Here is a bullet casing next to the Ant-Man I made. It's smaller than him. Using the ancient art of toothpicking, I take a very small amount of glue and glue each individual bullet. Not a very quick process. I try to scatter them around and clump some of them together, making very random patterns. I paint each of them gold, which was surprisingly easier than I thought. Then I apply a dark wash and a little silver accent. And here you go, here's War Machine. This was an interesting mini because I didn't even know if my 3D file would even print. I had to do some extra legwork to get it to work, but it was worth it. Now I get to shoot all the baddies on the tabletop. Thank you to all my patrons and supporters, and thank you for watching.